As we just heard, there's a lot going on around this game, particularly late in the week, especially for the players who were here last fall and knew Lavelle, Devin, and Deshaun. How do you strike the balance between paying tribute to the players and their families and also preparing for a, a football game? Great question there. Um, you got to compartmentalize and, and be strategic with the hours in the day and know when you need to focus on football. Uh, they also got academics uh, that they got to continue to focus on. And then also uh, spending the, the appropriate amount of time mentally preparing themselves uh, for uh, the emotional uh, you know, roller coaster that they're going to have late in the week and then also uh, on game day. And so it's a, it's a delicate balance. And you want to make sure that you um, fill all the buckets properly um, uh, like I said, there's no formula. Uh, so we're, when we're doing football, we're focusing on football. And then when we step away from football, we try to uh, be present uh, in the moment uh, so that we can uh, capture the moment um, and be ready for, uh, uh, for this weekend. Yeah, Tony, do you have an update on your quarterback situation? Yeah, so, so Tony's day-to-day. -day, uh, you know, he's, get, he's getting more uh, uh, range of motion in, in, uh, in his shoulder. Uh, but, uh, you know, he wants to play. You know, he's pushing to play. Uh, each day is, uh, is encouraging. But right now, he's day-to-day uh, he's -day with the shoulder. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if, if he doesn't go, it, it would be Calandria, I imagine. And where is your confidence level in, in what he's been able to learn so far? Oh, uh, I think that, that we've seen it uh, when, we've, when we've been in the stadium scrimmaging um, in, di in different situations. Uh, as I've said, uh, his confidence level uh, is, is high, is always high. Uh, he has a moxie about him. Uh, I think the, the challenge will be for us to make sure uh, we put him in the best position to be successful. Um, still got to go, you know, call, call it to win the game. Uh, there's no question about that. So, you know, by the end of the week, we'll have our, our plan condensed and concise and, and, and tailored to, uh, to, to, to fit either one, you know, and have the ability to, to uh, expect Tony to run out there. And if not, if it's Calandria, then we have a plan uh, for him as well. But uh, he's a competitor. Uh, he's got a, he's got leadership qualities as a uh, as a freshman. Uh, he's got uh, playmaking ability. You know the biggest thing for us, if uh, if he is the one that runs out there first, is just making sure that we kind of kind of keep him, you know, uh, level headed and, and and calm and collected, so that he can go uh, do his job, which is to distribute and uh, and manage the system. You just touched on kind of the, the approach of how you get there, but is there a, a drop dead date for you in terms of, hey, if he can't practice Thursday, he doesn't go. Has he played enough college football that? Um, you're, you're comfortable with him missing practice and go. Yeah, what's I mean, your approach? With, with him, it would be a game time uh, decision uh, on that. Uh, we, we know uh, his background. Uh, we also, you know, he had an opportunity to, uh, to show us, you know, kind of how he was going to react and respond uh, in the situation that he was in this past, this past Saturday. So uh, with him, it would, be, it would go all the way up till game time. Mm -hmm. What is the biggest growth you've seen from Calandre? I know he's got that Florida swag and moxie, but where's the area you say, okay, we've seen this grow from him? It's just being, uh, just playing within the system more. Uh, you know, I think uh, day one uh, he wanted to show, you know, what he, what he can do because uh, I think he's been a guy that's always had to prove himself. Um, and he doesn't mind that if you look at his background and, and where he chose to go to high school and, and compete and the guys he had to compete with, he had to prove himself. So I think he came in the door, you know, just really wanting to prove himself. And, and now we're, we're trying to get him to, to understand the, 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 the total responsibility as a quarterback. Uh, it's not just uh, the big play. It's the routine play. And sometimes the routine play is throw the ball away. Uh, and that's where you've seen him grow uh, a little bit is that now he's trusting that, that the routine play is the right play to make and not try to force the, uh, the big play. Uh, three guys not on the depth chart, Chico Bennett, Sue, and also Antonio Clary. Any update on those yeah, guys? Yeah, so, so Sue, uh, obviously we, we, we all saw what happened. And I don't think uh, in the moment uh, – Anybody knew the the extent or the magnitude, but it was uh, it was it was pretty pretty serious for Sue. So um, he had to he had to uh, undergo surgery. Uh, surgery was successful, so he'll be uh, he'll be out uh, obviously for for the rest of the season. Um, and then I, once I know more, I'll give you uh, a better update on that. But but he won't be he won't be with us. And then Chico Chico's back in practice, and and, and obviously it's a it's a day to day uh, thing with him. Um, so didn't want to list him on the depth chart because didn't know, uh, but he was out there today and limited uh, limited reps, but able to go uh, able to go full speed. Uh, so we'll ramp him up, and uh, again he'll be a game time uh, decision. Uh, Clary uh, is getting closer. 
Uh, he was out uh, in practice today, modified uh, just uh, from a rep standpoint, but uh, he's moving around a lot better, so he'd be a game-time decision as well. So both of those guys uh, could be uh, in the lineup, but it's really going to be how they progress throughout the rest of the week. And then from a medical standpoint, is it, is it the right time uh, to put them back in the lineup? And then just an update on a couple other guys, uh, Sackett, Ahern, uh, Sackett Wood, a Josh Ahern, and Lex Long, uh, are probable for, for this uh uh, for this week, uh, they're uh, uh, they're dealing with some some injuries that that may keep them out. So I'd say probable with those guys. Uh, we won't know until uh, later in the week uh, if we'll have those guys available. You just mentioned Ahern there at the at the linebacker spot. Uh, Cam Robinson gave you some good snaps against Tennessee. How do you feel about him taking potentially a larger role if if gotta go. linebacker unit? You know, got to go. As I as I, as I tell him, uh, man, hey, nobody cares that you're a first year or, or nobody cares that you're a freshman. You're the next man up. So, so it would be a combination of he and Stevie uh, Bracy. Those two would have to have to fill that role. And then uh, look at looking at uh, James Jackson. He's played you know significant amount of football, so he's got some flexibility. So he could move to the will spot if one of those guys is more comfortable and more suited to play the mic. And then he could stay at mic, and and one of those guys could uh, could fill in at will. We try to cross train him as much as we can. Stevie would be further along just because of his time in the program. Uh, Cam still still figuring it out, uh, but it's uh, it's next man up, you know. And and some of those those freshmen, you know, they got they got thrown in the game. They had to go. They were the next man up. I mean, that's that's our current situation from a depth standpoint. And uh, at the end of the day, JMU's not going to care, and nobody's going to care. You got to be ready to play. And then we have to do a great job uh, if we're in that situation where we're uh, we're counting on them to play a significant amount of snaps, and we got to help them from a coaching standpoint. What did the film, reviewing the film, reveal that maybe wasn't immediately apparent to you after the game? Right. Um, just it's a game of inches. You know, you, you, you see the end result a lot of times and then uh, in, in real time, and then you go back and you watch the film. Uh, really proud of the guys because uh, the effort, you know, on the sideline, you know, you felt like it was really good effort. And then when you watch the tape, man, there, there were guys that were straining. Uh, there were guys that were playing a lot of snaps, and they were still, you know, they were still fighting all the way to the end. Um, you know, missed opportunities, uh, missed opportunities. There were there were several uh, opportunities where we had chances to get the get the ball carrier on the ground, and you know we didn't get them on the ground uh, at the point of contact, and then it resulted in you know uh, explosive plays. And then offensively, man, just a game of inches. You know, one, one more inch as we reach on the on the outside zone, and the ball is gonna the ball is gonna spit. You know. Uh, we overset just just a little bit too far, uh, you know, on our sets, and then that, that gives the defender the ability to go up and under on you and get to the quarterback. And so, uh, what it revealed for me from a positive standpoint is we're headed in the right direction because it wasn't just from our standpoint turning guys loose. We we got beat in some one-on-one -on -one matchups. We lost some one-on-one -on -one matchups, and there's there's not much you can do about that other than go back to work and figure out fundamentally. And then it also revealed that. We still got to work work to do with our guys to get them to completely trust their fundamentals all the time. You know, it, it revealed on tape that at, at times, you know, in, in the heat of the moment, you know, we, we, we reverted back to some old uh, things that, that, that we were trying to eliminate. And that's a great opportunity for us to teach our guys that, man, it's fundamentals, fundamentals, fundamentals at all times. What's Westfall, Sam Westfall, done really well to, to earn that cornerback job and, and be the guy there? So, you know, he, he, he runs well, and so he has a, a, a really good feel for being able to stay on top of routes. Uh, and obviously in the system that we play, uh, that's a premium, uh, being able to stay on, uh, on top of the routes. And, and that's what he's shown. Uh, his experience uh, picking up the, the scheme quickly, and then he has the ability uh, from a coverage standpoint to stay uh, in position where, uh, where he's supposed to be relative to the scheme. And then on uh, James Madison's quarterback, uh, Jordan McLeod, what do you know about Jordan uh, and and uh, what do you think the challenge is in slowing oh, down? I know Jordan r very well. I, I think that was a setup right there. I think he set he set me up with that question. Uh, having uh, spent time uh, recruiting his older brother uh, Ray Ray, um, man, first of all, it's an awesome family. Uh, it's got got great parents. Um, they did a great job raising all of their uh, all of their children. And uh, there's there's a, there's a younger one that's playing ball uh, down the road at, at a place I'm familiar with. But uh, Jordan, um, just Getting to know him through through Ray Ray in the recruiting process, man, he's a, he's an outstanding young man. First and foremost, uh, very humble. Um, he's a he's a really really good athlete, uh, but he but he's a better quarterback, uh, and I think that that he's kind of went on his 
you know, his journey to, to prove that, that, that he can be the quarterback that, that he believes and wants to show that to everybody. And so uh, I'm excited for him and his opportunity just because I know, you know, his journey and how hard he's worked. Uh, uh, and then obviously the relationship with the family. So it'll be nice to, to, uh, to hug his neck before the, before the game and then go compete against him. Um, you know, obviously his body of work at, at JMU is, is not, not huge, right? So it's, it's hard to, to truly evaluate that. But obviously they saw something. Uh, throughout the course of camp and then also uh, in the game to, to give him the, the nod uh, versus us. So obviously we're going to prepare for both quarterbacks. Uh, I think they're, they, they have some similarities, but they're also uh, very different. Uh, so we have to, have to be prepared to, to plan for two different guys um, in the game. Of course, this weekend will be emotional, but is there some ease or maybe some comfortability in knowing that this is going to happen on your home turf, you know, in front of your fans where last week you didn't have that necessarily? I'm excited uh, to to be back in front in front of our fans, uh, just to to extend my gratitude to them for all the support uh, that they uh, that they've given us uh, throughout the course of, of of this journey since last November. Um, you know, hoping that that is going to 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 bring some, as you said, some ease to our to our players because it's going to be emotional. I mean, it's, there's there's no way uh, around it, and it should be right. And and obviously. Uh, everything that's going to be done is what needed, what needs to be done, what's supposed to be done uh, in this situation. Um, and then the best way that we can can play our part as a team is to go out and play well. And that's my message to the guys. Uh, the administration is is doing everything they're supposed to do uh, and need to do to to honor uh, Lavelle, Devin, and Deshaun to 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 honor their families uh, the way they're supposed to. And then we need to go out and honor them by the way that we play. Um, and and again. Outcome will take care of itself, but I'm just more interested in seeing these guys uh, lay it on the line because that's what uh, those three would want. Sticking with that for one more, what is your expectation for the fans and the turnout? And, and do you hope that there are some people that maybe aren't football fans but are just Charlottesville people who, who come out to support I, you as well? I, my expectation, uh, considering, is, is a packed house. Uh, you know, I, would, I would like to see a packed house, a, a sellout, and everybody showing up in orange. Um, and supporting, obviously, we're, we're, we're there uh, for the game in support of our players on the field. Uh, but also, uh, when you think about uh, the reality of it, three young men, man, they, they, they're no longer here. And, that's, and it's difficult for me. And, and, like, some days are harder than others, right? And same, and same for those players and the staff. And I can't imagine what it's like for their, for their families, you know, dealing with it. And we have an opportunity. Right. As a as a community, uh, as a football program, um, fan base. Right. To pay respect to 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 the, th the three young men, their families and then also uh, the other 125 guys, you know, that have chosen to to stay the course, do what's difficult um, and show up every single day. Uh, so my expectation is that, you know, everybody shows up uh, and supports these guys uh, and helps and help these guys, you know, put. Have some have some peace. Kind of, kind of have some. You know, this is a big. This is a big day, right? It's, a, it's, it's a big day. It's a big milestone, and and I can only imagine because I know for me there's been anxiety, you know, leading up to it. I can only imagine what it's like for for the players and the families. And so we're going to need uh, the fans. I mean, we 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 need uh, the support. And so I would like to see uh, everybody show up uh, in orange and and cheer these guys on and uh, and be a part of the uh, the services that are going to take place uh, before uh, before kickoff. We talked about Sedarian and wearing the number one. Football-wise, tell us what has made him ready to contribute. What, what did he bring here? He's a first. He's a dynamic athlete. Uh, he's very, he's very, very quick, very twitchy. Uh, runs well. Um, very natural playmaker. When you watch him, you can just tell like he knows what to do with the uh, with the football. Being that he was a, a quarterback in high school, uh, he has a command and a presence about him. You know, he can he draws other players to him, even the older guys. Uh, so he just has a has a presence uh, about him. He has the ability to make plays, and you know the moments have not appeared to be too big for him. So the first time in Scott Stadium, man, he looked like he had, he was a veteran, like he'd been there. And and, and you do that on purpose because it's different when you're on the practice field, and then when you transition into the uh, into the stadium and you try to create um, somewhat of a game atmosphere. And man, he didn't he didn't miss a beat. So his confidence, his poise, uh, he's got a great personality. Uh, he's fun to coach, uh, and he loves uh, he loves to compete. He loves football. When you look back at the tape and see the O line, how much was it 
how can you evaluate them when you look at the D line? Do you face Tennessee? How do you balance that? Right. So, uh, you know, a lot of respect for for, for Coach Heupel and, and Tennessee and, and what they've been able to do over the uh, the last couple of years. And and I think the 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 speed and the depth, right, will kind of kind of shocked us a little bit just because it's hard to simulate that uh, on our practice field. And I think once the the shock wore off, the guys kind of settled in. Um, I feel like uh, it was a combination of the inches that we didn't take advantage of. There were instances where we were trying to do too much. You know, I think that, that we were overzealous and guys just, you know, wanting to, to, to will themselves to victory and not using their fundamentals. I think about the snaps, you know, that we had. When you go back and you look at it, you know, we're leaning too much on the football, right, because we're trying to get off too quick. We're trying to compensate too much to try to, uh, to, to combat what's on the other side. And they did a good job, and they, they, they were rolling them. So they had, they had a lot of depth, and so their, their depth was, was fresh. Uh, whereas, you know, our depth, you know, we, we didn't have depth to be able to roll in uh, to combat it. So I think it was a combination of several things. Uh, and I also saw some pictures that when our guys did it right, they had success. Like when they, when they trusted their technique and they were all working in unison and, and the backs were on track where they were supposed to be, we were able to have some success uh, in the game. So that's what you build upon. Uh, but then you also, you know, have to evaluate, okay, how do we get better? How do we put them in a better position? How do we get them to uh, use their fundamentals more consistent? And then for, for us, you know, as a program, like, hey, we got some work to do from a recruiting standpoint to build the depth uh, to be able to compete uh, in games like that. And is Jimmy Christ available now? Or is so Jimmy Christ is, is back in practice. And so uh, he's, uh, he's available. Uh, got to see where he is from a conditioning standpoint because he's been out for a uh, uh, for a couple of weeks, but he is available. Uh, he's been full go in practice the last couple of days, so so that's an option. He wasn't quite ready to to throw him out there. We we're anticipating by the end of the week, uh, another week of practice will have him have him ready to go. So he'll be uh, he'll be available. Mm -hmm. I don't know how closely ACC players follow non Power Five football. Do you think your players are aware of the success that JMU had? You know, first at FCS in particular, but even more well, recently. They, they, they were educated yesterday. Uh, I think the record's like 100 and like in the last, I just did the last 10 years, are like 100 and like 25 or something like that. 79, I know it was a 79% winning percentage. They've won two national championships. The, the, the record between UVA and JMU is two to one, right? Uh, last time we played was 1983. Uh, they're favored uh, in the game. So they've been, uh, they've been educated. And then when you cut on the tape, you see it too. Like you, you, you cut on the tape. So, so I don't know how closely they follow it. I mean, I don't know how closely they follow uh, anything nowadays, uh, to be honest with you, because they just have so much information, access to information at their fingertips. But uh, they were educated uh, uh, about it, and they were reminded uh, about And then you look at Coach Signetti and what he's done and his success. Like they're, they're very well coached. Um, they're a very disciplined team. Uh, they got really, really good players. Um, those kids have a chip on their shoulder, uh, probably, because they may not have been recruited by UVA. So uh, they're being educated this week uh, on who their competition is, not trying to, and that's, that's not trying to make it about uh, JMU, because that's never be the case. But uh, I do feel like I have a responsibility as a coach just to, as I'm preparing them for battle, so to speak, to, to know what they're walking into or know who their opponent is. Uh, for those of us who haven't seen a lot of JMU football, what what impresses you about their defense? Ooh, all right, they're athletic uh, first and foremost. Uh, athletic, uh, very sound. Uh, you don't you don't see them out of position uh, much. Um, they're very uh, they're they're twitchy on the edges. You know they can get after the quarterback uh, off the edges. Um, I'm gonna say they're 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 sneaky stout on the inside because you're going to look at the stat sheet. I mean, you're going to look at the paper and say, okay, well, they're 6'2", uh, 280, right? But when, but when uh, their D tackles, uh, 99, uh, Carpenter, when he anchors down, right, he's, he's hard to move. So, so uh, structurally, they're sound. They're athletic. Their linebackers are, are two big athletes that can run sideline to sideline, and then their their corners can come up in uh, in press coverage, uh, and they and they can isolate them. You know that's what you see. They have confidence in their corners uh, to be able to play uh, bump and run coverage with no help, uh, which allows them to be able to uh, dedicate more to uh, to the run to be able to stop the run. So very sound, very athletic. 
uh, and they're they're stouter than you than you think uh, when you look at the uh, at the depth chart. You got to watch the film, and and it, and it shows on the film. If if Tony is able to play, uh, what did he do last week before he got injured that that uh, that you liked? I thought I thought first and foremost, uh, being in that situation because that's the first time he's played, you know, in front of that many people uh, in that environment. I thought he handled the situate the the environment well. Um, he looked very poised uh, in the pocket early on. Man, he stepped up and I mean, he had guys barreling down, and he hit a couple of of, of dig routes across the middle like that he threaded. Uh, with a needle, and so he did those things uh, well. I thought uh, his in-game demeanor uh, was good uh, throughout the course throughout the course of the game. Um, there were a couple of couple of things I, I would like to see, uh, a couple of decisions in the in the run game with the RPOs. Uh, that was part of the game plan. That uh, and and again, their athleticism, you know, can can quickly fool you. But uh, I thought he managed the situation well. Uh, I thought his leadership uh, was there because uh, you don't know in that moment. So his leadership was there. Uh, and he made some throws uh, that uh, that let me know that if we can protect him, that he's going he's going to be able to to help us win some football games. And not to be negative, but if if he can't play and Calandria is your guy, do you have a third guy ready? Yep. So so right now uh, we have uh, we have Grady Brosterhouse uh, getting ready, uh, Jared Raymond uh, as well, and then obviously you know Delaney could be an emergency guy for us uh, if we uh, if we need if we need Delaney. So so right now if if Tony's not available, it would be Calandria, then it would be Grady Brosterhouse, uh, Jared Raymond, and then then possibly Delaney. Probably the most important part of your video review. What did you see from Ganyard's tackle attempt on the <laughs> opening kickoff? And then overall, how did you think he, he performed? Oh, man, you know, how cool was that? You know, when you, when you think about it, like, 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 I mean, that's what college football is about, you know, opportunities like that. And, and to see him go out and, and perform and, and, and kick the ball uh, in the end zone, it helps us, right? Um, you know, the one that, that was a little bit short of the end zone, man, we had, we had a hat on the guy. On the uh, on the twenty yard line, we just fall off the tackle and it pops. So I thought he kicked the ball well. Uh, he handled the situation. So excited for him and and man, Sparky uh, Daniel Sparks is a weapon. Uh, we got to do a better job in coverage. Uh, you know, I thought our protection was improved from the year before. Uh, we were very leaky in protection, uh, punt wise. Uh, I think we might have outkicked a little bit of our coverage at times, uh, but we also had opportunities to get uh, the returner down on the ground and we missed the first tackle. Right or, or or a guy you know does he take speed off of it instead of you know you know taking his 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 attempt at the guy and make him go east and west uh, we pulled off a little bit so definitely areas to improve um, but but did see a lot of positive but happy for uh, for Matt and hopefully that'll give him the confidence to keep putting him uh, out of the end zone. Who's that? Yeah, he slowed he slowed him down a little bit and then Sparky Sparky saved one. You know, Sparky went and ran one down, uh, and uh, trust me, we do not need our kickers uh, making tackles. That is that is that is not that's what I tell them. That is not what we uh, what we want. Uh, but uh, but the guys, uh, what I'll say is the guys have, have taken ownership of the opportunities that we missed. Uh, they've gone back to work. Uh, we've had two good days of practice uh, already uh, as we you know prepare for for this weekend. Sparks did tell Ganyard last week, based on experience, don't lead with your head. No, don't don't lead don't lead with your head. Anyone else? Yep. Greg? Yeah, just since last week, the ACC added uh, Stanford Chalice. <laughs> any, any, any thoughts? You actually had Miss, you had Miss Carla here a second ago. You know, she, you, uh, I, I, she left, she left quick. quick. Uh, she, she yeah, to, to be honest with you, like, we haven't even had a chance to have conversation uh, about that. Here's, here's what I do know. Uh, President Ryan uh, and Carla, um, I trust their their uh, their wisdom, their their judgment. Uh, I know that their number one priority is to is to make sure that uh, Virginia uh, is in the best uh, position uh, possible, uh, and I'm confident uh, about that. And uh, I'll learn more of the details uh, when that comes out. Man, I got I got bigger fish to uh, to fry. Uh, that's down that's down the road. I'm worried about uh, JMU uh, coming in here uh, this week. You touched on McLeod, but can you talk a little bit about JMU's offense? They, they, they're one of the few teams in the country that's been scoring 35 plus. That's right, and and so they 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 like to run the football, right? They they can establish the run. Their backs are backs are really good, and then that sets up their their play action. Um, you know, it might be a little different this year. 
you know, than they've been, you know, in the past with the, with their quarterback situation. But, um, you know, a lot of zone read, uh, RPO uh, type uh, type stuff, and then um, take their shots uh, down the field. Uh, so they got playmakers. Uh, they got some experience. Uh, they got a very experienced offensive line. Uh, that's what you notice when you watch them. Uh, I think they're senior and then juniors uh, across across the board that have played some football. Um, and they got good size, good length. Uh, they're physical. Uh, their backs uh, know how to find the find the creases. And then when they get into the open field, they're uh, they're hard to tackle. Uh, so you know we're excited about the challenge. Uh, anxious to see because when you watched them in this past game, they were a little bit different depending upon the quarterback. You know, when they had 14 in there, you know, it was a little bit different offense than when they had uh, number two in there. And so, you know, we're going to prepare uh, for both. Uh, but the you know, biggest thing is up front, they can establish a line of scrimmage. They can wear you down running the football. Uh, and then they can, you know, they can throw it when they need to. I wanted to ask you, either from your Clemson time recruiting or at any point in your, in your life, um, Lavelle and Sedarian, their, their hometown, uh, have you spent much time there, and can you describe oh. that community? What, what is that area like? Oh, yeah, I spent a lot of time. And so uh, first, one of my teammates, uh, my college teammates, uh, Ty Hill, uh, went, to, went to school there. And then when I was, was, was coaching at uh, my previous stop, uh, Robert Smith uh, went to school there. Um, and so it's, a, it's right outside of, of, of kind of the Somerville area, right? So it's, it's, it's not easy to get to. So football is really important because that's all they got on Friday nights. Uh, and, uh, and, and the, the staff there has done a great job of, of putting money into the, into the program, even though it's a smaller, uh, a smaller school, they've invested in the program. They take football very serious. And then it's very close to the Somervilles, the Fort Dorchesters, and the bigger schools uh, in that area where football is important. Um, but they, they've taken pride in kind of building that, that program up. In there, in person, and in the schools. Oh and all yeah, 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 many times, many and, times. And this is just a. Um, if you said it, I apologize. But what was Sue's actual injury? What was the surgery? What, what yeah, so so it looks like uh, it was it was ruptured patella tendons in both uh, in both knees, um, and so it was uh, it was it was pretty. The, you know, I was at the hospital with him and, and just trying to figure out what happened, and I don't think he really knows what happened. Uh, to be honest with you, it was like a freak freak type deal. Um, and so, you know, so, so, you know, keep him and his and his family in your prayers because he's got a, you know, he's got a significant uh, road ahead from a recovery standpoint.